I found this stool in the garbage on Long Island 25 years ago. I've used it as a workbench, but most of all it's been my favorite stool. I'm going to copy it with steel and walnut. These pieces of walnut are left over from a table that I cut up. It was a table that was rejected by a client, so I decided to use the walnut. And this happens to be right along the seam. That's why you see the biscuit joints. And it was a pile that I couldn't use because uh, the biscuit joints, but I decided to use it for the seat of this stool. You'll notice on one side it's nice and clean. And you'll notice that when I flip it over, you'll see all the half biscuits stuck in it. So this was scrap walnut. And what I just did by passing it through the saw was cut off the finish on one side and the rough cut on the back side so that I have good joints right here when I glue the seat together in pieces. I don't have a joiner so I use the table saw as a joiner. And here I'm just clamping the pieces together. To save time I did not use any dominoes or biscuits again. I've glued this before similar joints and, and it's held up quite a bit. It's never broke on me so I trust this is going to be good. It's not going to be a heavy duty stool. And here you see me using the stool that I love the proportions on. So I'm just going to basically copy the proportions. I'm only going to put one rung around the bottom. I'm not going to put two rungs on each side as you see in the original. And what I'm making here is basically a jig by which I can copy each side. The stool is going to have four sides. And that's where the rug is going to go, and then that's where the, the top of the steel base is going to go. I'm using 3 quarter inch steel tubing with 1 8 inch wall. And I'm using my DeWalt bandsaw. It's in a vise, and I keep the trigger clamped on, as you can see. And there's my Beaumont sander. So I've just cut all the legs, and now I'm cutting the, the cross members there, where you would kind of put your feet and they have a little bevel on each side. So I'm cutting the slight bevel. And now I'm sanding the bevel to fit around the tube. You'll see in a second where everything fits together. And I'm using the side of the belt there, the very edge. I have it adjusted so it hangs over the back there a little bit. And there, you can see where that goes. And now I need to cut the top. It's angle iron. I'm using one inch angle iron. And one side of the angle is going to be welded to the sides of the, the legs. And the other side is going to be the flange by which I put a screw through. So I'm making sure I get one correct and then I duplicate it four times. And here it is. Fits good. And now I need to make four more. So I've already cut them and now I'm just adjusting them and sanding them a little bit. Making some room for the weld. And now I check them. Each one fits. So every one of these joints are going to be welded in that jig. And this is my Lincoln TIG 200, square wave TIG 200. And I'm um, welding with silicone bronze. And the one thing that's nice about silicone bronze is it leaves a gold weld, which you'll be able to see once I file it. I'm actually using steel right under the angle iron and silicone bronze right at that joint there. So. And that's one side tacked together. And now I'm going to make a second side. Each time I use the jig so that all four sides end up to be exactly the same. Again, I'm using steel for that joint, so I'm just tacking it right now. And now I'm actually using silicone bronze for this joint. And I'm not really the best TIG welder. I can make things work but I am nowhere near as skilled as someone like Jody, for instance, on welding tips and tricks. He's, I consider him my teacher. So check him out. Welding tips and tricks, Jody Collier. He's an excellent teacher, and he's a wealth of knowledge for welding. Now that I have the two sides, I've got to connect them together. I needed to niche out that piece of angle iron. So I'll, I'll need to niche that there and also on the opposite side. And so here I am, using the silicone bronze for this joint right here. And I know that I'm going to grind and file my joints, the ones that you could see. 
at the top there I'm welding inside so no one's going to see that. There's just going to be a butt joint available to view on the outside. And then my jig just caught fire. Just blow that out. <laughs> there we go. And so now I have three sides done. And now I'm going to go for the fourth side. And there's my last piece. My foot rung, you might call it. And then my last piece of angle iron, which also needs to be notched. And there I am notching it again. Notice how I used that piece of scrap steel to prop up while I cut. And there. Now we're ready to weld the fourth side in. And right now everything is tacked. Once it's all tacked and everything sits square, and I'm confident everything is in order, I will then weld everything all the way home. Again, silicone bronze on the downstairs joints and the upper inside joints, I'm using steel wire. And there I got everything done. And it sits flat on the table, and so now I'm welding, TIG welding with silicone bronze, and so sort of getting that same part of each joint each time, so I'm comfortable doing it. So now I'm back to each leg one at a time, so and now here I'm doing it from underneath. Again, keep doing each thing that's the same each time so I get good at it right away instead of jumping all over the place. And then it also keeps you organized so that you know you've done all parts of each joint. And now I'm filing. This is just a regular rat tail file. I have a, a slim one and a, and a chubby one. That's the chubby one. I'm using both of them. And uh, I have more control with the file. You'll see I ultimately use a die grinder as well. But overall I got more done with the file. The die grinder was just to show some variety. But I've definitely gotten more done with that file right there. This is a die grinder with a carbide burr on there. The carbide burr basically eats right through that silicone bronze weld. The silicone bronze weld is super soft. And now I'm just topping off the top of those tubes or the legs just to make sure they're nice and flat once they go underneath the walnut seat which I'm going to get to again in just a minute. Now here we go. While I built the frame the glue dried and this is a rough cut right now and uh, I'm using my Lee Nielsen plane to smooth the top off. This isn't necessarily a scrub plane but I really like it for all different reasons especially because it's super sharp and I'm able to take the whole surface of that glue up down nice and flat with that plane. I'm going cross the grain but then to do my finish I'm going with the grain so this is sort of my finish pass and I get the top of that almost perfect without even having a card scrape it or anything. And now I'm just cleaning the bottom up a little bit. I'm beveling the sides because I didn't know what I was going to do about some of those biscuits that are showing. But I'm just going to leave them. A couple of them don't go all the way to the edge. So I'm going to bevel the stool a little bit just to make them look like solid wood. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Right now what I'm doing is I'm just getting a perfect circle. The bandsaw cut was just a rough cut. And I'm using the table saw. My new saw stop. And having that saw stop makes doing a job like this a lot safer. Gives me more confidence, especially this type of cut. And I'm beveling the bottom of the seat. Again, some of those biscuits left a couple of divots. And by beveling the bottom of the seat, it just gives it a slimmer profile. And it fills in some empty voids left open by the biscuits that weren't in all the way. Does that make sense? So now when you look at it, it's just solid wood. You see walnut, then you see biscuits. Again, just to repeat, this was all scrap walnut. That's why I used it for this seat. Just I didn't want to see it go to waste. And since it's for me, I can overlook having a couple of pieces of white wood showing on the edge there. Just polyurethane. For this video I only gave it one coat, but ultimately I would give it three or four more coats. Now this is from the Complete Sculptor. It's, it's called Metal Blackener, Presto Metal Blackener. And I'm showing that for a long time because everybody asks me what this is. And watch how quick it works on bare steel. It turns it black almost immediately. And the interesting thing is that it does not work 
as well on the bronze so the joints all show a little gold which I like you can see them there now this is an oil it goes over the blackener and gives it a little bit of a protection from rust and it makes it a little glossy so it looks like aged blackened metal which is something I just personally like and now to put feet on the bottom of the, the stool I'm hammering pegs of walnut into that three-quarter inch hollow tube just banging them in there by banging a square peg in there it gives it some room and now these are the nylon feet that did not come in black at the time of this publication I would have used black but they didn't have it and now I am drilling the screw holes that are going to hold the walnut seat up from underneath and there's the bottom of my seat and you could see there where the biscuit has a little void in it and here we go now this is the stress test and I'm pretty confident it's going to hold me up and it's the same size and scale as my favorite stool I found in the garbage 25 years ago thank you for watching